Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to Sunday's edition of the Doctor Who Daily. So after the BBC and Doctor Who have been on silent mode, we finally have quite a bit of Doctor Who Series 13 news. So let's go. Doctor Who Season 13, officially titled Flux, releases on Halloween. Jodie Whittaker's final season of The Doctor has been titled Doctor Who. By the way, this is not her final season. She's still got three specials. It's the final full season, but she's still got more in 2022. So, Jodie Whittaker's final season of Doctor Who has been titled Doctor Who Flux and is set to premiere on Halloween Day of 2021 for a six episode run by Richard Think of Screen Rant. Doctor Who season 13 has been given an official title and a premiere date on a major holiday season. Holiday. Season 13 of the series will be the final traditional series for star Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor and the final for showrunner Chris Chibnall. The series will lead into a series of specials before Whittaker's last episode, before she regenerates into a new Doctor who has yet to be cast or yet to be announced. Whittaker's final season of Doctor Who has been teased over the past year. Two of her previous companions left at the end of her New Year's Day special and various plot lines have been introduced in her tenure, including the Timeless Child and the destruction of the Time Lords once more. It's interesting, isn't it? I thought they were going to say the destruction of Doctor Who. Uh, that's a lot of people's opinions. Production of the Time Lords and once more, uh, once more. Unlike previous seasons, this one, this one season will tell one overarching story, more aching to a miniseries. Various villains are set to return, including the Weeping Angels and the Satarans. Yet no word on the iconic villains like the Daleks, the Cybermen, or the Master, who have all battled Whitaker's Doctor previously. I believe that Sasha Dewan's master will be involved, if not in this part, six part series, maybe in the final three episodes, he will turn up somewhere. According to Collider, Doctor Who season 13 will be titled Doctor Who Flux and will premiere on Doctor uh, will premiere on October the 31st, 2021. This will mark the first time the series has premiered on Halloween Day with six episodes confirmed for the upcoming season. It means the final episode of Doctor Who Flux is likely to air on December the 5th, 2021, if there are no delays in the schedule, which I doubt. While no Doctor Who season of the new era has premiered on Halloween Day, Whittaker's first season as the title character did premiere on October the 7th, 2018. Doctor Who has been known for its holiday specials around Christmas and New Year's Day, and the following specials for Whittaker will premiere around major holidays. Doctor Who Flux will not only be competing with people's normal holiday plans, but also high-profile releases from various streaming services around the time, like Star Trek Prodigy, which premieres on Paramount Plus on October the 28th, 2021, and it's going for a similar family audience that Doctor Who is aiming for. Doctor Who is aiming for everyone. It's not just for kids. I've heard this take about all the kids, their target audience, will be trick-or-treating. Absolute nonsense, right? It's not just about live viewers anymore. It's all about the iPlayer as well. It's a mixture of when people come in. As long as people watch it, eventually the BBC will be happy. The title of the series Flux it also seems to speak to the larger Doctor Who franchise. It was recently announced that Russell T Davies, who revived Doctor Who in 2005 and was the showrunner until 2010, will be returning to the series. 2022 will be Whittaker's last year as the Doctor, meaning that the next uh, Doctor, next Doctor actor, will be entering the series most likely in 2023, which will mark the 60th anniversary of the franchise. The franchise is in a major state of transition on the cusp of a major anniversary, with old talent returning and new faces stepping in front of Whittaker's Doctor. Has had an interesting couple of years, and her Doctor Who saga will hopefully go out on a high note. I hope so, because whether you like what Chibnall and Whittaker have done, this is Doctor Who, and we want it to be the best. We want as many people to watch it and enjoy it. I've been very relaxed about the Chibnall era since I've heard about RTD's return, 
because at the end of the day, I can just enjoy this now. Whether I like it or not, I don't know. It's been a, it's been a mediocre era. There's no question about that as far as I'm concerned. But there's a bit more information about Doctor Who Series 13 to come out yet. So we also got a mini Doctor Who trailer. I mean, you can't call it a trailer, but it was very exciting. Doctor Who Season 13 trailer warns Weeping Angels, Sontarans and Amp, and Amp more are coming. Jodie Whittaker's Doctor sends out a broadcast warning that Weeping Angels and more are coming to threaten the universe in Doctor Who Season 13 by Brendan Klein of Screen Ram. The new trailer for Doctor Who Season 13 has just been released. Doctor Who is a long-running British science fiction series that follows the adventures of a Time Lord adventurer with the ability to regenerate forms. The series originally ran from 1963 to 1989. The current reboot of the show, it's not a reboot, began with Christopher Eccleston's ninth iteration. You call it a reboot, and then you're saying it's the ninth iteration, which proves it's not a fucking reboot, right? of the Doctor back in 2005, and the show has been running continuously ever since. Season 13 will be Jodie Whittaker's final season as the 13th Doctor, when her character regenerates. It is still unknown who will be cast to replace her. However, there will already be a familiar face behind the camera, as original reboots, not a reboot, showrunner Russell T Davies will return to the series for season 14, after departing along with David Tennant's 10th Doctor back in 2010. BBC America has debuted the newest teaser for Doctor Who Season 13. It's an expansion of the previous Doctor Who Season 13 teaser that aired on BBC One, in which Jodie Whittaker's Doctor briefly broke through the static to ask, Can you hear me? Now her full message has been revealed, and it details the, manif the manifold threats that are coming to face the Doctor. Her companions and the universe at large. The flux is coming, she reports. And it will be bringing along with it weeping angels, the Santarans creatures called, and no, angels, the Santarans creatures called the Ravages. So that's interesting as well. We've got the flux. So basically, I would we'll talk about this after this article. But it looks like um, flux has gained, basically teamed up with all these enemies of the Doctor. Are they after the Doctor? Are they after Earth? very interesting or maybe even the universe she reports and it will be bringing along with it weeping angels the satarans creatures called the ravages and more check out the teaser below where we've already seen that the weeping angels are some of the most notorious villains of the new series the statues who only move when you're not looking at them first appeared in the 2007 episode blink which is generally regarded by fans as one of the most terrifying episodes of the series although they have recurred they haven't been seen on the series since the 2013 Christmas special. The Centaurans have also made a fair amount of appearances throughout the show. They are a race of m militaristic, warmongering clones from the planet Sontar. The Centaurans originated in the original run of Doctor Who in 1973 and haven't been seen since 2010. The, the creatures known as Ravages and the entity or event known as the Flux are as yet unknown. So fans will have to tune in to, to the new series to discover what they are. Even though this season will be shorter than most, they'll be packing in as many monsters and cameos as they can before they bid fans farewell. It seems like Jodie Whittaker and showrunner Chris Chibnall are looking to do a victory lap before their exit. To do a victory lap, don't you need to have actually had a victory? Bring it, bringing back two classic villains along with the net new major threat will certainly be an excellent send-off to this current iteration of the Doctor. And by word, does this Doctor need a great send-off? So let's backtrack a little bit because there's been some major accusations from some people in the fan base that BBC's marketing for the brand new series of Doctor Who has been bad. This is something you hear from all stands and fans of all franchises. Everyone becomes a marketing expert. It is true. The RTD and Moffat era had big movie trailers and there was lots of them. But they didn't start them any earlier than this has been done. Um, but here's the thing. This is not down to the BBC. 
Chibnall doesn't like showing a lot of footage. He doesn't like spoilers getting out. I actually agree with this, but people think, you know, there's this self-entitlement from people. Where's my trailers? Where's my spoilers? Because everyone's been used to it. So in the past few days, or the past week, should I say, since last Saturday's Strictly, we've seen some kind of manifestation of the Doctor coming through the screen. Can you hear me? Right? A couple of days ago, the BBC Doctor Who social media account went. It, it blacked out. It, it went away, which got everyone excited. Now, as usual, the same people who said the Happy Valley um, showrunner would be running Doctor Who in 2023, who were wrong, by the way, said, this is something seriously wrong. The BBC have done something wrong. What's going on? Why has this gone off? This is typical BBC. This is so bad. Anyone with half a brain, and I've only got half a brain from all the alcohol I've drunk in my life, knew this was a marketing drive. And even when the BBC Doctor Who social media came back on all the socials, they were still saying what they were saying before. No, this was a brilliant marketing drive and it worked. But not only that, just like what I was talking about earlier on the DCEU Daily, with Deadpool giving out a number you can call and hearing a Task Force X's meeting, well, BBC have given out a phone number. You can ring up a phone number and listen to a message from the doctor or something like that. I'm in Cyprus, so I'm not going to be ringing up from here. But it's really great, especially for little kids. Um, one Doctor Who fan got his daughter to do it and filmed her doing it. And they were talking about it and it was great. It's great for kids. So all this is a great marketing drive. And all because Chris Chibnall doesn't like showing too much footage. So the BBC have been really, really creative. This is brilliant. This is great marketing. It works for me. I know a lot of people who have an agenda about this era of Doctor Who will come up with some kind of hot take. This was a marketing, marketing drive. It's a great marketing drive and it works for me personally. But here's the thing. This Christmas, I want a laptop so I can go live on YouTube. I want my PlayStation 5. I want the brand new Lord of the Rings 4K extravaganza box set with everything on it in 4K with the extended versions, right? But I may not get them. And this is there's an there's an analogy coming. So bear with me, right? So I might open a big box thinking that my girlfriend's got me this stuff and it could be 600 fucking socks of different fucking colors. Hopefully one of those colors is pink because pink is my uh, favorite color. So you can have the best marketing in the world. But when we open that box, and if Doctor Who Series 13 is as mediocre as what we've had in the prior two seasons, especially the standalone episodes, because the ARC episodes last year were fucking amazing, by the way. I congratulate Chris for that, because I got really intrigued, especially with the introduction of the Joe Martin Doctor. So, But his standalone episodes simply didn't hold my attention, and that's a fact. So you can have the best marketing in the world. Everyone bases... And ordinary people who watch these shows and movies base so much on marketing because they're desperate for footage and to see what's happening. But at the end of the day, you can show absolutely jack shit and have a successful show. People said James Gunn's The Suicide Squad was a failure at movie theatres because the marketing was bad. No. I'll tell you why people didn't turn out in their droves. Because The Suicide Squad isn't a popular IP. People stayed at home as well because COVID's going on and watched it on HBO Max. They're the facts. Marketing has nothing to do with it. Man of Steel had big marketing, nearly showed us all the fucking movie through their trailers and TV spots, and people were split on that film. Same with BVS, Batman vs. Superman. I know we're talking about Doctor Who. Great marketing, great marketing drive. It did make okay money, just under a billion, but of course the studio wanted it to make more. So you can have the best marketing of all time. But marketing can... Let's look. Let's talk about Doctor Who Season 11. Doctor Who Season 11's marketing was pretty solid. Couple of trailers. You know, we saw the new Doctor. Very exciting. Um, 
And it kind of worked for that episode. It was a record for Doctor Who, the revival of Doctor Who. People came in, around 9, 10 million viewers came in. What happened in the Ghost Monument, they dropped and they kept on dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. Even Rosa didn't pick it back up again, right? Because basically people saw the woman who fell to earth and said, this is very bland, this is mediocre, I don't really like this, I'm not coming back. Intrigue is great. Season premieres and pilots always have the intrigue. And if you don't get the big hit then, then you're never going to get any ratings anyway. So you can have the best marketing in the world. But at the end of the day, if your product isn't what people want it to be, if it isn't any good, you know, so you can have no marketing. Marketing's important. You need your marketing. And they've done this because their showrunner, who has complete creative control, and that's right, by the way, whether you like his vision or not, has said, I don't want you releasing too many trailers. I want it to be a surprise. So let's talk about the flux and the ravages. Is it the ravage? It's not the ravages from Guardians of the Galaxy and the MCU. The ravages, right? You've got the ravages and the flux are complete new aliens, new creatures. We don't know who they are. But... The ravages may be creatures, but the flux may be a new organization. Yeah, they could be an organization who have got these aliens together to attack Earth to get the doctor's attention. So the flux may not actually be um, creatures because the doctor doesn't say much about them. And I think she does say the ravages are creatures, but does she say the flux are creatures? Flux sounds like an organization, like unit or something, kind of a universal task force, maybe for some reason to, I don't know, I don't know, obviously I haven't seen it, it it's, it's just a theory of mine. But also with all this marketing push, we mustn't forget, they actually projected a, a Sontaran spaceship, was it in the city of Liverpool? This is brilliant stuff, you can't accuse them of bad marketing, right? They've marketed it at the right time. We've got, what, two weeks to the end of the month? Two weeks until Halloween, or October the 31st. They'll be ramping up the TV spots as well. This is exactly the right thing to do. It's a fever pitch moment. The closer we get, the more marketing we get. The posters are okay. Listen, uh, the Chibnall, um, Jodie Whittaker era of posters are not great because, again, he doesn't want to give anything away. I mean... Normally, if this was Hollywood, we would see the ravages and flux in the posters with Jodie Whittaker. But we're not going to get that this time. So, you know, because, again, he doesn't like to give too much away. So I'm intrigued. I'm very intrigued. So I don't know if, the, if flux is something to do with the Timeless Child arc. Now, this what's really exciting about this, for the first time since the classic series, we're getting a little series of episodes about one story. This is great. And I'll bring the show starring Kiefer Sutherland 24 into this because that's basically one series throughout 24 episodes. And what that does, it builds and builds and builds up the fever pitch. And this is what used to happen with the continuing story, you know, in five or six episodes of Classic Who. It's great that Chibnall's done this. It does make things more exciting because also with a continuing story, especially if you finish each one with a cliffhanger, you know, people will want to come back. As long as the cliffhangers are really good and the story works, I think that Chibnall would have thrown everything in this because if, see, if series six is epic, if the final three episodes of his and Whitaker's run are epic next year, no one's going to talk about the other stuff. And if he can resolve the Timeless Child, Timeless Children arc in a satisfactory way for himself and the fans, we can just move on from this. And this is what I said earlier. I'm very chilled out about the Chibnall era now. And I do have a good feeling in my gullet. That's my heart. My heart and my gullet, by the way. Um, it's rumbling. I'm really hungry. I'm, I've just put a chicken on the in the oven. So looking forward to that. Anyway, so I do have... A good feeling about the Chibnall Whitaker final run. I think there would have been a lot of soul searching. They want to finish on a high. But as I say, with Russell T Davies coming in to save the day in 2023, I'm really not concerned anymore. The future of Doctor Who will be very exciting. I think they're going to execute 
a multiverse strategy, which is really exciting as well. So I just can't wait for series, um, for series 13 and the final three episodes next year. I think Doctor Who has finally got a great future in front of it. This has been the Doctor Who Daily. I'm Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. I will be back tomorrow with even more Doctor Who Daily. Don't forget, comment, like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss this perfection. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, goodbye.